Okay, let's let's get started. Thank you, thank you everyone to, uh, for coming to, to this lecture, Young Spanish Architecture. So I'm, ju I'm just going to uh, introduce uh, Maria, Jaime and Jorge uh, today. That um, we, we are very fortunate at the second level of undergrad architecture to have them this semester uh, teaching as a, as a team and engaging with their amazing knowledge about architecture and many other things. And, sense of humor, I guess, also. <laughs> so um, uh, the thing is that they are going to introduce themselves through their work, but I wanted to say that the, it's, we wanted to share collectively the experience they have had in their young career. So they graduated relatively recently, and all the things they have been doing are, as architects is quite amazing. The variety of things they do and the attitude they face work and all that, and we thought it would be a nice opportunity to share uh, that with you all, uh, grad and undergrad. Um, another, uh, I wanted to thank also the school, especially Bill Sherman, who has been, uh, and Ines, <laughs> facilitating this uh, relationship with the university uh, in Madrid, the, the uh, Politecnica for Madrid, to kind of establish a relationship that might be stable of um, collaboration between young graduated or recently graduated uh, students to teach here back and forth and, and so on. So thanks to Bill, all this work of coordination and to Ines. So without any more to, uh, you have the floor. Thank you. So yeah, I'm I'm going to start by thanking Margarita, of course, for um, for all the help she's been giving us, and also Bill, Ines, Luis, Anthony, who has been our constructor at the level. And so what we're going to re to present here, it's uh, I would say divided in four four categories. First, we're going to talk about our background, where do we come from, the all three of us, and then each of us is going to present um, kind of like our work. Um, and yeah, I'm going to leave you with Maria. She's going to do the first part. Hi, everybody. OK, so let's start with our school, where we came from. Um, before we tell you about our personal experience, we would like to put you a little bit in the context. The three of us came from Madrid, especially from the School of Architecture of the Technical University of Madrid. It was the first school of architecture in Spain, and it's from the 16th century. Um, but this building, of course, is not from that <laughs> age. It's from 1936. Um, it has been phrased by such important figures as architects, historian, and, and uh, architecture critic like Kenneth Frenton. Um, and what he tries to explain with this phrase is that in our school, we have counted through, throughout the history with professors who in the, his professional life have been uh, great architects of recognized national and international uh, prestige. All of them have been both students and teachers, and their, teach, their, and their teaching experience has also gone through several countries. Most of them were part of an international exhibition held on the MoMA in New York, where Spanish architecture was valued. Because of the importance that these professors have in our academic uh, training, I would like to name the most relevant ones. The one that we call the teacher of teachers was San Diego who was named previously by David Kahn last Friday here. He built large buildings in Spain, and the most famous one is Torres Blancas. Also Alejandro de la Sota, who built the well-studied gymnasium uh, Maravillas. Julio Canolaso, he taught him uh, at Madrid School, and in his studio has been great architects such as Campo Baeza, Jose Manuel Sanz, and also Inés and Luis that are here today. And his four sons architects continue today in the studio Canolaso and also in Cel Cascano. Jose Manuel Sanz, one of the professors who tutorized one of the largest number of master theses of graduate students in our university, and whose office is really well known in Madrid. Maybe Rafael Moneo is the most famous ar Spanish architect abroad. He has uh, also been professor at Cooper Union in New York, Princeton, and Harvard. Alberto Campo Baeza, who has been, among many other international experience, regnant distinguished visit, uh, visiting chair of University of Washington. Juan Herreros, who currently teaches his up in, in Colombia as professor of professional practice, but also have been teaching in Princeton and in the AA of London. 
and also Iñaki Avalos, who, has, uh, who was also chair of the architecture department in Harvard. Tuñón and Mancilla are very well known aboard, and they are winners of the prize Mies van der Rohe of architecture. Emilio Tuñón currently teaches in Madrid University, but also in Princeton. This couple, Aranguren and Gallegos, are both full-time professor and direct the master thesis course in Madrid University. They have been curators of the Spanish pavilions in, Bene in pavilion in Venezia, in Venezia Architecture Biennale. And as teachers, they have taught courses, masters, seminars, and conferences in international universities as Yale, AA of London, Escola de la Ciudad de Sao Paulo, Mexico, Rome, Paris, Bogotá, or Chile. This other couple, Nieto Sovejano, besides studying in the University of Madrid, they um, studied the master's degree in architecture in, and planning in New York, in Colombia. And they are teaching right now in Madrid and in Berlin. The last example of this generation of architects is the well-known uh, office Cel Gascano. They have taught in Massachusetts, Massachusetts Institute of Technology and have built the Serpentine Pavilion in London. To understand a little bit uh, better how our university trains uh, has uh, our uh, our university train has been, we will go uh, very quick through the methodology of our school. It's a very big school. We have around 5,000 students. This implies an, implies an, a specific way of teaching where the corrections are served in a collective environment. These corrections are made around a table with big printed plans so that everyone can hear corrections from other students and apply them to their own projects. Also with models or with a projector since the projects are currently also presented digitally. But this, numbers of people, uh, but this number of people also implies an alive distribution of the studio of projects. What means it changes according to the activity that develops in it. The students don't have their own work area. Everything is common and rotates according to the schedule of projects of different courses. So if there is a, an interesting lecture in a classroom, any student can attend, even if it, is, if it is not their class or their grade. This is an example of a large, a large classroom that changes during the week depending on whether there is a conference, or a general correction, or a pin-up, or a small group correction with each instructor. On the other hand, a lesson that we have learned from all these teachers is that by traveling, we learn architecture. That looking, analyzing, and understanding in situ uh, the great projects of architecture is where we become a true architect. And as one of them always says, the best class is, an, is a bus. Thanks to this, and accompanied by them, we have traveled uh, and studied a lot of buildings around the world. And we have been able to visit different universities and share our pro projects with other students with our same concerns. Well, as Maria was telling, the quantity matters. Um, the quantity, the critical mass provoke different voices, different ways of thinking and different points of view would generate what we consider as a collection, schools within a school. We cannot consider a school has one, only one direction, only one way, and we think that we can yeah, consider that our school is a collection of schools within the school. The students don't necessarily have in this way, uh, a way, but different ways, which leave them the possibility of having different kinds of approaches, as well as getting different kinds of skills and tools. Here are some examples of the different students' approaches through the final thesis of some of them. Let's start with the urban approaches. Pedro Pitarcha Archipelago final thesis works with the idea of metropolitan islands. The space in between this archipelago, the streets, are understood as a continuation of the interior, as a new interior space which is generated by a collection of objects. You can see that collection here. And you can see what he does in the city in this drawing. In other way, Luis Pachon's final thesis takes, takes us uh, its point from, uh, of departure with the, with the bicycle scale, with the small scale. The bicycle and the idea of the city based in a sustainable environment provoke, in this case, as, and as we can see in the images, a collection of gadgets with, and, and which create a different conception of what the urban furniture could mean. 
another different approach. It's from the idea of the small, the minuscule. Rodrigo Garcia's project is exactly that, a thought about how the detail can be several times repeated in order to create a complex, sometimes really complex systems. Systems that are, in this case, also movables and which are, in this case, or were, in this case, also patented. Another approach, which is maybe more realistic, but anyway, crucial for nowadays architectural practice, is the rehabilitation approach. In these three examples, we can see also different ways of understanding the meaning of the pre-existence. Here, the images belong to Andreas Gonzalez's final thesis. The building is understood as a historical facade that must be conserved and an interior that can be manipulated, as you can see in this image. In a different way, Esther Belmonte, which is uh, in this project work within the London's Battersea Power Station, a huge industrial building in the British capital, work with the idea of creating a magical world within a new geometrical structure. Answering to the same uh, pre-existence, Salva Carrasco's project keeps, however, almost the whole structure of the building. The project is an acupuncture a way of understanding the new and the old, as you can see in this image, in these sections, and this axonometric. Analyzing one of the most rational points of view we have here in Enesbrea's project. Situated in Almere in the Netherlands, Irene's project is a result of, and of the understanding of Dutch housing tradition, as well as understanding the importance of the chimney in the Dutch culture. In a very different way, Marta Jarabos works, again, parting from the urban scale, in this, case, in this case, from the rural scale, trying, in this case, to provide a satisfactory solution to the problem of isolation, the population that we have in some parts of our country. Walking also with the idea of this mentioned depopulated areas, we have here Irene's Iglesias project works, which works with uh, the landscape, but at the same time within the structure of an abandoned village in the middle of the country. And finally, here comes the kind of approaches that we can consider we have more, the three of us, in common. Since 2009, approximately 100 students, including us, had the chance to learn, a developed, to, uh, to learn and develop our final thesis in countries, in countries like India, Cameroon, Angola, Mozambique, Morocco, Brazil, Peru, Bolivia, etc., etc. The cooperation and development projects were and are a chance to learn about the culture and the construction techniques of a concrete culture, but what is even more important to do to do more with less. I cannot imagine anything more contemporary than this. In this way, Anudena Skanos project in Ahmedabad, India, the same city where Jorge and me were working for our final thesis, proposes a project of pieces which fix in the existing buildings, provoke new activities, functions, and facilities. You can see here the zoom how she acts with the facade of the building, like trying to add uh, like a plus space, as like a Tony Basel done. Here with another example, developing different devices. So yeah, now we've seen what these young architects were doing as a students. So now would say what's going on in the practice, as a practice wise kind of approach. So. Um, we, we've been engaged, or architects in Spain, young architects have been engaged with many, many scales, many different projects. And I will show you quickly some of the different um, projects that architects in Spain have been working on during the last years. We've still been, uh, we've, we've still continued to do uh, big scale projects, uh, like this one inserted in the city's urban fabric from Pacman Architects, it's a cultural center or this one in the middle of Madrid, creating um, a, an oasis in the middle of the city. 
outstanding housing projects done by very, very young architects. This one that you already know. Um, also creating outstanding interior atmospheres. But we've also worked, um, or architects have also worked in within the small scale. So very small interventions like rehabilitation of homes, um, but charged with a lot of intention. This one, for example, the All I Own, All I Own House from Enorme Studio is working towards the idea of flexible homes, one space with flexible furniture and how can that be configured and built. Also office spaces, all you see has this contemporary approach of understanding what's the, uh, what's the places where we're acting. Um, Langarita Navarro, Red Bull Music Academy, um, a project with a little bit bigger scale, but a, a very, uh, this is one of the interiors of the, of, the, of the project and a lot of sensibility with color, light, material. Also, we've been going abroad. Uh, architects from Spain have gone internationally and this is the Cosmo project that I guess you already know uh, from Andres Jaque that won the uh, PS1 pavilion at MoMA. Or in South America, in El Salvador, this one, the Puma Energy H H HQ. Some other approaches to this internationality that deal with a more uh, study base kind of idea. This one is a project that it's uh, based on the research and mapping of different, um, call it urban commons, things that were occurring in the in the public space in the, in Lagos. This is a project by Soho House that was also showed in the MoMA in New York. So very international kind of. And then, of course, because of the situation of the country and many other things, we've taken over this idea of rehabilitation and reuse of old buildings or. Um, like this one, for example, from again Langarita Navarro, having a very contemporary approach to a, to a, um, an old mill, or this one, which is like with very low resources, how to transform an industrial space into something else—a retail shop or this in, this one is a cooperative of um, many um, um, shops, and this is from a studio or more um, ambitious approaches to. Um, how to work with the heritage. This is Izaskun Chinchilla uh, work on the um, castle of Garci Muñoz, which is like inserting this um, very uh, different, um, let's say, structures within this old castle, medieval castle. And then another aspect that we've all, that we'll also engage with is this idea of of participation and social interaction, engaging with people. And this is a project called Campo, Campo de Cebada by Zulo Arc. Um, it's, a, it's an abandoned plot that people took over. And so architects were part of a puzzle, of our inter interconnected puzzle there, helping them to realize what they wanted to, um, what they wanted to create this space, what, what they wanted to change it to. This is another one uh, in Peru by Basurama. Uh, it's a project that it's um, with very low resources, um, making radical changes of, on a space. So small acupuncture um, approaches also, like this one from Pac-Man Architectures, or more sustainable based, um, like this one from Ecosistema Urbano. Also, this, um, we've, we've started opening the fields where architects can work and also working with scenography and working with creating like this, for example, is a, is a design for the entrance of the BBK live festival by Zulark in, in Bilbao, or this one, which is like a small project for a small concert um, venue. And also design. Design has always been part of an architect's life. So we've continued with that and with our, um, the tools that the university is giving us, um, we, we've approached this kind of like um, uh, way of continuing um, practicing architecture. And this is Patricia Archiola or Paul Design making these um, handbags. Some clothing lines also designing even um, fashion or taking um, traditional ways of knitting and traditional and rural techniques to design this very contemporary and very modern, we'll say, um, uh, furniture like Methodorama. Even 
architects have been designing trophies, trophies for um, different, uh, many different awards. This one, is, this is one example. And website, why not? If you go w use the tools that the that the, that the school has has given you and use them for whatever form of ar architecture you feel it's, it's if it's like web architecture, then it's fine. But uh, this is an example, for example, Eber Studio. Uh, there they've been doing web for uh, a lot of important and renewed um, also architects. And then the more the most or yeah uh, the the art side of the. Um, would say of the of the practice is this one this one for example is an example from Bo Boa Mistura they are working with um, street art um, to engage with uh, with um, uh, underdeveloped communities and transform those those communities by making these really low resource um, actions but very engaging with the with the population or more traditional would say traditional art like this carving from Guillermo Uso illustrators working all over the world or artists that also architects that have become more and more um, renewed with time like this is Luis Urculo has been showing at the Met in New York and this one may be the one that may shock us most this this also other branch that we architects in Spain the young architects have been taken on is this idea of um, this in in, um, startup mentality somehow that can take you sort of whatever you want. So this is an example of a of an edible uh, water package that one architect from the School of Madrid created, and he's now like he's been funded by many uh, kind of like uh, Silicon Valley companies and everything. So it's a it's a way also of approaching like with your tools. What can you do with the tools that you're you've learned? So yeah, these are more or less different things that we've been doing. And now I'm going to leave you with Maria to present her work. Yeah. Now each of us are gonna like try to explain what we did after we finished and also for the final thesis. Um, well, I would like to introduce myself, uh, as Jorge already said, as a young uh, Spanish architect that after finishing the university four years ago, has decided to try several aspects of the profession. Uh, first of all, I will start explaining my master thesis project because it explains very well my uncertainties about architecture, urban planning, and the development, development of the society and the cities. And I would like to thank my tutor, Luis Pancorbo, because thanks to his corrections and uh, perseverance, just a week ago I knew that the project won the excellent award of AIA and Bill Washington Awards. And so for those, uh, who have him as teacher, enjoy it, and please learn a lot from him. <laughs> um, the project is located in Alfama, the oldest and historic neighborhood in Lisbon. The authentic um, essence of this district is walking among his clipper tile facades in stepped uh, streets. After doing anal an analysis uh, work in situ, I noticed that so many buildings have been listed as abandoned, uh, uh, backhand, or unoccupied. And the problems I detected there was uh, standard housing, insalubrity, insufficient light, uh, uh, also stepped stairs, uh, lack of young people, closer of subs because of inactivity, and elderly population. That's why I decided to intervene uh, in the neighborhood by um, uh, emptying interior of the buildings in poor condition and keeping these wonderful tile facades. From the port uh, to the castle of San Jorge is a considerable difference of height of 80 meters, and it creates a very different uh, path in the neighborhood, especially for the elderly residents. Uh, therefore, the union uh, of, the, of these properties is proposed through gateways and different heights, and connecting the whole neighborhood with elevators to avoid the stairs. For it, I understand rehabilitation as a group with the intention of making the slightest di uh, distinction between public and private, creating a semi-public space and integrating them in the buildings. I decided to explain one example of a block of eight properties that creates a unique new building. The project prevents uh, make buildings close and hermetic. These are buildings in relation to the streets and permeable to them. It means the building becomes part of the neighborhood and you can enter the building through the ground floor where are some restaurants and shops. 
and by travel through the public galleries in every floor and in the patios. The window is the most important element of the project. It is not just a hole in the facade that gives us light. It becomes a structural element and stitch the recovered facade with the new structure. The complexity of, of encounters between the new floors and window facade holes is used to create different spaces, situations like window niches, high windows, benches or tables. As we can see in this uh, unroll elevation and in the top the section for each uh, part of facade. Here we can see some axonometries uh, that explain the process of emptying the buildings and the structural window that seals the facade with the new structure. The interior program are homes for the elderly and for young people, all accessible. In that way, relationship and understanding be between them is created and also the, rehabilita the, the rehabilitation of the neighborhood. Well, in this section, you can see perfectly all these things that I'm trying to explain, especially the thing with the windows, that you create benches and tables, and uh, also the galleries, so you have like in between spaces in both facades, inside and outside. Well, it is also highlight to use the colorful tiles on the sloping roof, so I don't damage the aerial view of the historic center. The project also makes use of strategies for energy saving and the proper use of natural resources. The galleries on both facades provides a very pleasant atmosphere, both in summer and in winter. Well, this concern for thinking about cooperation projects in areas where it is necessary, as it was in Lisbon, took me to make a project for a school in Zachila, Oaxaca, Mexico. I did it together with a group of 20 German students from the University of Berlin, where, of Berlin, where I studied one year. The interesting thing about this proposal is that we do everything related to the project, design, constructed plans, structures, etc. But also, uh, get the budget for build it, making some parties, a publication of our work in a book, uh, some exhibitions so that we can get all the money we need to build it. And after that, we went to, uh, to build it in the site during three months with our hands. This has been without uh, any doubt the most important experience of my life where, I, uh, where I've learned a lot about construction. It is not the same to draw it, uh, to see it in the reality. And if you have the opportunity to build it, you learn incredible things there. Uh, the school is, porous, is a porous building, open to the outside due to the good weather, but also creates a large meeting space inside that provides shades and shelter during the day. The whole construction is made by wood and concrete. Continuing with this uh, cooperation project, I'm currently building together with two colleagues from my university, 20 bamboo houses in Ecuador, in La Tola. It's about uh, emergency housing for families in rural areas that um, after the big earthquake, like a year ago. Uh, there are houses built in bamboo with low resources, raises light on the, on the ground. Well, in addition to cooperation, as soon as I finish the university, I create a small group of architects called Oficina Mutante. Our goal is to work at all scales, but above all in those that go beyond the figure of the architects that we know today. As an example, here I saw, I saw, I saw you two interiors of two stores, pop-up stores. The requirement of both was to create something out of the ordinary to sew the products but a very low cost. In this, we use scaffolding as counters. And in this other, painted cardboard boxes. The total budget for this one was $120. And the result was very, uh, very well received by both customers and, and owners. <laughs> I can believe that at all, but yeah. <laughs> we have also crossed the limits of architecture by making some polycarbonate uh, handbags for the famous fashion brand Paul, who marches in Madrid Fashion Week. And we have also designed uh, furniture, like this lamp called Amantis lamp, lamp which uh, structure works with uh, balance with weights. 
And just right after, I joined another international university colleagues, and together we set up this office called Destileria de Proyectos. And one day, we received a call from a very popular television show to record a program in which the ob objective was to build a stair of 200 steps on an impossible slope of more than 100 meters of altitude in a vineyard in Spain. The problem of the area is the bad accessibility to the vine vineyards in high. So we have to propose a solution that would make the collection of the grapes easier for the farmers. They need a quick solution to build because the television program should last only four days and we will be the ones to build it uh, with some help of the people around in the area. Uh, we propose a simple landscaping project that did not damage the environment at all and that goes uh, down like a snake down in slope. For this, we use good and earth and create the 200 triangular step adapting to a very complicated topography. Well, the program was a real success of audience, so we are pretty proud of that. <laughs> and they also recorded it with a drone. Uh, you can find it in the internet, the, the video of the whole program. And yeah, at the same time, uh, I submit to a contest with my partner and friend, Marta Jarabo. Uh, and this contest was organized by, by a known profit, profit society who take care of blindness and elderly. The theme of the contest was housing for the elderly and the future of our society. We won the first prize. We, be, we begin uh, by detecting those problems derived uh, from all and seeing what could be a small scale solutions. You can see in that table, there are like some, like the problems we detect and how little things we can, we can do to solve it, like railings or just the color orange that is the, what blind people can detect more, like not, not, like not all blind, but yeah. Um, and some things with the voice and sounds, all these kind of things are in a big table, table like that one. Well, so we designed Senexpand, that it's a model that provides for the possibility that people gradually lose their physical, cognitive, and sensory, and sensory abilities. All accessibility solutions that may be required over the elderly are integrated from the start uh, in the project, from the beginning. So at the end, we can say that this house is alive. You buy it, and then after many years when you get old, it starts to to become a different thing with all these gadgets. Uh, they will be using or activating depending on the needs at each moment of its inhabitants, allowing senior uh, to feel autonomous gradually. Um, we create a fundamental wall where all these gadgets will be, and especially the handrail that cross all over the house and that allows seniors to be held at any time. The main wall also contains a railing on the top to be able to transport an oxygen, an oxygen cylinder throughout the house, or a TV, why not? Uh, the distribution of the house has no doors and its rooms are independent on the others by the spiral path on the way, on the wall, from the most public to the most private. Right now, the society is looking for a sponsor, this non-profit uh, society is looking for sponsors to create a prototype uh, that according to the journals and news could revolutionize like the way of life in our families and with our elders. Well, and apart from these activities inside and outside the architecture, during the last seven years of my life, I've been very intimately linked to a very well-known architectural office. This office is called Aranguren and Gallegos, and precisely be, uh, because it's my family business, I'm so committed with all the states of the project. I have worked in this office as a design project for the last four years, and have carried out several projects from its design to, this contract, to, the, to the, constru uh, the construction. But since today, the time is too short, uh, I would like to highlight only the last three projects as a sample of work, what I do there. The first project is the recently inaugurated uh, ICA Miami uh, Museum in the Design District in Miami. We started uh, with, the, with the design in 2014 and uh, its construction finished on 2017, just the last December. 
um, in that, uh, that offers itself to the city and is convinced to become an international artistic reference and an icon of Miami's cultural life of, uh, offer. The architectural uh, tool used to attack this target is based, is based on luminous cubic volume as a magic box. The, south, the southern facade is metallic, aluminum, bright, solar, mirror, and an, and an announcement of uh, events that will be held inside the museum. It is closed, protecting the exhibition halls from the direct solar radi the radiation of the south. The facade is pierced uh, by luminous small openings that respond to the triangular geometry, consequence of the evocative fracture of the lateral movements of the strong hurricane winds. In the southern facade, the main entrance appears as a transverse facade, which is the lobby of the museum and connects us with the sculpture garden. Underneath the metallic, uh, the metallic plane floating, a horizontal strip is created on a street level, a shadow where the letters ICA Miami appears, large and deep, like the columns that support the building. The museum opens to the north with a glass facade, giving natural light to the halls and being the holder of installation and temporary artistic creations. The exhibition halls are neutral, white, bright, uh, spaces with a sufficient height uh, large, uh, for large uh, format installations. The museum complex is complete with a serious space, the Garden of Sculptures, conceived as a large outdoor exhibition hall. Well, I've been in charge uh, for a long design process and with the communication in the distance and in different languages with um, the American uh, office that we work with. And it was at the end uh, a successful project, I guess, because right now it's, it's pretty nice to see it built. Okay. Well, on the other hand, at the same time as the museum was finished, we also construct a private house in the mountains in San Lorenzo del Escorial. It is a project made with uh, novel materials, concrete and good, that uh, dialogues a lot with the uh, environmental because it's almost in the forest. Um, and it's called the House of the Oak because according to the strict regulation of the area, we could not touch a leaf of this tree. It has a unique geographical location and is placed on a stepped slope. Uh, this allows to have privileged views of Madrid city from the terrace. The large terrace flies over the landscape, allowing to open the large windows to break the boundary between exterior and interior. The large concrete eaves allows a feeling of protection from the sun in summer as it, because the orientation is southeast. The interior are pure with a structural concrete roofs. We leave the roofs uh, uncovered, just like it was in the construction site. The large sliding windows allow a total communication with the natural surroundings. We look for the direct or indirect natural light in all areas of the house, as you can see here, for example, in the, in the stairs. But above, all in the rooms that have double height to hide the bathroom at the end. Right now, we are working on a project of two housing towers in Madrid. It's a construction, a construction. the construction will uh, begin in a couple of months, but the fundamental idea of the, is the creation of large terraces full of vegetation that allows to take advantage of the good climate of the area. The views over the great park of Aldebebas and the city of Madrid are also privileged. For that reason, the living rooms have large corner windows. Plan is distribute, distributed uh, in a spastic to try to create cross ventilation inside its house and allows as much light as possible to get in. This is a view from the internal garden that are excavated uh, on the ground floor. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm going to present you. Um, what is my work? Um, and I would like to start with this idea of the cycle, um, which I think has, um, of course, many of us have the same, um, the same ideas and the same concept that we are revolving around. And that's why I think in my 
particular case, I think that's uh, something that it stick with me, this idea of always being back. So uh, I finished as a student, now I guess I'm professional and teaching, and this idea of constantly learning in this process is something that I wanted to highlight in my presentation. So first I'm going to talk about my final thesis project. Um, it takes place in Ahmedabad, the Indian, the Indian city. And um, so there I was working with this engulfed village, a rural, rural village, rural place where has, that had been um, taken over by the city. So it, it was isolated and, and not interconnected. It had a lot of what we'll call problems. But the um, project focused on the idea not to solve the possible problems of the village, but to learn from their idiosyncrasies and, and the different things that they could, um, how did it, how did they live in order to propose something that could answer at least some of the questions that this village was um, going through. So the project was uh, based in three different strategies. We will say that it was like one project, three projects in one project, but they were all interconnected. One is based on this public space and building this um, um, public uh, buildings. The other one was thinking about a, a way, a model for, or a, yeah, like I would say like a, a path for this, um, for this engulfed village to uh, get communicated with the rest of the city and also be able to grow, to grow in population and to grow in height somehow, to, not to compete with the with the with the, um, with the city, but to but to at least not being pushed away. And another and the other the third one was creating an incremental uh, housing project um, that could use could be used here or somewhere else. It's more about thinking about the strategy less than the final product itself. This is the strategy held um, through the um, um, public space. Um, kind of like a um, more material approach and connecting spaces, um, but still maintaining the quality of, of uh, gradation of spaces from private to public in a very sensitive way. So we don't like open up everything and just transform it in a very um, in a very direct way, but more with uh, some acupuncture um, interventions. Also with the buildings, with the public buildings that were rehabilitations of small um, destroyed buildings and more an infrastructure, an, an, another one that is like more a, an infrastructure approach, I would say. Um, this is an example of those activators, those buildings that were also taking into account the big scale, but the small scale too, the furniture, how would, have been, how would that be developed? Um, what what materials, what kind of like constructive system. This is the approach uh, I would call more, um, let's say, um, theoretical or experimental. It's a way of thinking, thinking of, oh, sorry, thinking of ways to take Indian relationship with space that they normally do in the ground floor, how to take it to uh, higher levels. So this is more or less the um, idea that I came up with. It's kind of having these these different um, typologies typologies of spaces that could be combined and transformed in order to um, create this interior, um, would say like ground floor in every in every level. And this is the part where I start um, talking about the um, incremental housing model, how to. Um, Always, it's it. This project was always about learning what they were doing there and and transforming it in order to give a more contemporary approach and in order for them also to to not just um, say them say that they should always live in, in within the, their tradition, but they have ways of approaching like contemporary um, more uh, contemporary approaches of living. Also, this is how this housing would work over time with adding of volumes. This is something that I didn't invent. This is something that it's, of course, uh, being done there, but it's a way of um, uh, gathering it together and making some clear strategies so that everything is understood. And this is like the whole um, strategy altogether, these three pieces of the puzzle that work together 
in order to create one project. The idea was not to have three projects completely not linked, but having one that made, made sense uh, within. And um, yeah, what, what I did learn from this, and that's something that I've taken to my practice afterwards, is this idea of the consciousness for urban, the fact that all scales matter. And what I think it's more important, and I think it's rooted within my ideas, is um, this thing of of, of um, understanding the context, engaging with people, with with not only local people here in India because it's India, but with clients, uh, with different professionals, mixing all together, and sort of understanding the idea of the architect as a, as a piece of a of a puzzle or of, uh, as a part of a mechanism that should work all together in order to kind of like um, work. Uh, so after this. What 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 happened? Um, I guess the answer is that I started working with some firms, but I wasn't sure about the how that was leading me to where I wanted to be. So I started with some other colleagues of the school. Uh, our own office is called Ensalada. Yes, it means salad. Um, so the idea behind that is this um, concept of mixing. So we wanted to have different approaches to traditional um, uh, questions, but also new ones that were maybe going to occur. So this idea of always um, working in different fields with different approaches and engaging a lot with people, with different people, people that are not, they don't need to be specifically architects or um, or even related, look, like, well, I'm going to show you in the examples that you, you will understand, yeah. And um, so yeah, we've worked well, we're starting to work in big scale. This is a recent competition that we won for the sports center in Oye Manzanares in Madrid. We just won it um, in Jan uh, January, and now we are delivering the project uh, for like submitting it to the city council. And was this idea of um, it was an, an addition to an old structure, so we wanted to create this uh, new volume um, that was supposed to be. Um, talking with the environment in the terms of this triangular structure, working with the idea of the mountains, the rockable, like the climb, climbing wall that is inside and all that, and also creating like a new new public space for the people to go there. And yeah, this is one steer, steer image. And what I like to highlight about this project is this, this thing that we are going on through now, this, this participatory process where we are engaging with local people there in order to see what their opinions are. It's not that, we are, it, it's a matter of us learning from them too. It's not that we say like they are going to do the project. No, it's not that, but we are taking from them. And this is a model a neighbor built and brought into one of the sessions, meeting sessions that we had. And I mean, it's, it's, it's super nice when you feel people engage with the, with projects that you've designed and how they, how to work with them. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a challenge, you know, cause you normally, you normally don't agree. With 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 what all of the all, all, everybody is like proposing, but it's interesting. And there's another project that we're working on right now. This is twen, t ten uh, homes in in the mountain, also in a different part of Spain. And here, the uh, also the the fact that we are doing this is a cooperative of of users. So each of them. Ten, the ten, the ten of them had the, the the flat already bought without the design being finished. So we had the basics, but all the the process has been like even this is not the final image of the of the project because it it has changed so many times and it's been a process of working with them in order to personalize their own um, house that they're going to have. So that's been a very enriching process, also very tough, but but very very interesting. So this is right now the actual site. This is from a few weeks ago. Super excited, although you cannot see anything. <laughs> and we have the parking and the basement. So that for us is like a big deal, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> but we have also worked with small scale um, in uh, rehabilitation of, of homes project. This one is in Madrid. It's based around the idea of having these three. We had these two structural walls that we could not touch. And um, we worked around the idea of having different, these three different um, 
say, uh, like halls, which have different approaches to speciality, to materiality, and to what the activities are going on. Like this, for example, is the first space. It's more kind of like, we call it the hall, because it's, um, it's more industrial and materials are more like, it's more flexible, so a party can go, but it's also, there's also um, a study space over there. There's the interior one that um, has more to do with wood, with this idea of um, coziness, would say. And the next one is uh, the patio, which is more fresh, vegetable, um, with vegetation and, um, yeah. This is another project of small scale, very small scale. This one is one of my favorites. It's one of the, of the first we did, but it's this idea of how one small, tiny operation can completely change the way a house is lived. So we designed this screen, this small screen, and with just removing the removing of one wall. So this was the previous situation, and with removing of, a, of one wall and the addition of this screen, this mobile screen, we could um, create different atmospheres in it. So I don't know if this is like, yeah. And then we also decided to place the bed in a different position, like right towards the window, looking to the amazing views that this place had. So those two, diff two very little um, um, decisions completely changed this space. So we, you could be at, in bed and with people uh, not looking at you, or it, it's used as a changing room too, because you can fold it and you have the, the closets over there so you can use them, or you can have a party or just like yoga thing. <laughs> this, is, um, this is the first one we actually built. And uh, it's also a home um, rehabilitation or renewal. Um, the stair is like the most characteristic of this, uh, of this project. Um, it was a kind of like a very long process of understanding how, did, how it it worked, how we could make it structural so that it made sense. And then trying to think about ways of this kind of structure working to be also like um, a place where this is a house that is, um, the client is a young couple with two kids, but with two more coming. Well, now they have four, but in the moment there were two plus two coming. And so we wanted it to be like a kind of like, still have this kind of safety, but being a place where kids could engage with. So this is so these wires that you're seeing is where all the Christmas decorations are um, placed, the Halloween thing, and even the, the grades from school is all hung from there. So we started the project with this idea of uh, having this incremental thinking. So there's two, two bedrooms in the first phase, would say, in, that are in the, in the first floor. But in the next stage, the second floor can become two different separate bedrooms. So we will have four bedrooms in the end. So that was like kind of a, our whole approach to the project was this, this idea. And then very clean lines, very clean. I mean, we were starting, we had to. <laughs> yeah, these are some other pictures. The care for small details that we, this was, uh, this was not easy, like to, to think about this kind of element with nothing behind, n nothing underneath, there's no, um, screw uh, going on there. It's fixed with some resin and yeah. And then we've also done things working with other people. This is something that um, has enriched our ourselves by collaborating with, not, with others, learning from each other. And we've done a series of competitions with others, other offices and other architects that um, have enriched a lot of our experience. So this one is a school with Zulu Arc. Um, in Italy, and it's based on the idea of having these modular blocks uh, that can be added to uh, an initial structure, and then this um, within time, this could be incremented, and having these kind of different um, roofs. So same same footprint, but different roofs in order in order to kind of um, understand the difference of each spaces. This is an image of it. Um, also playing with the playfulness of the colors, vegetation, the inside. And yeah, you here you see this idea of modular blocks, the ones that are like more in a, kind of like a shadow or, or um, yeah, less opacity or more opacity. Well, that, those are the ones that can be incremented and if you have a bigger plot, you can take them there and 
still work with the same system, systematic or systemic approach section of the project. And then this other one is a project that I think could have never been done without us collaborating with some other people because the drawings are not what we normally do, but this was like, this has actually changed our way of drawing and our way of thinking and everything. So this one is a project for, it's another competition that we, uh, we did with the AJ Studio. In this case, the competition was set to make a cultural center for a beer manufacturer in Madrid. Um, so this beer manufacturer is typically from Madrid and we said, okay, why don't we add, instead of doing a building, why don't we add a street to the Madrid fabric and it's the street from this kind of, this beer brand. So we had this building that we were supposed to rehabilitate. So we decided to conceptually tear it apart and create this interior street that was somehow open to some of the places. These are some images that were like a mixing of different, very different techniques. We had a lot of arguments and in the end, I think no one got the, like no one did what they wanted to do, but I think that the, that's why the final product is even better. So yeah, all these public spaces gather within this building. Uh, another one. And even the furniture was designed in a way so that uh, the furniture for the offices was kind of like a street vendors thing with all this uh, flexibility and mobility. That's something also we'll, we learn. I mean, I learned from India and I think that's something that I took from there. And just to end, I would like to talk about this cycle thing where I um, engage again with education. So even though after, um, after school, some of us, some of our team were still working within the university and teaching there and everything. We decided that we wanted to do something um, not different, but for, for uh, like our own way somehow. This is always has this selfish kind of thing where you want to do things your own way, even though you are collaborating with people, it's sometimes like, I want to do things differently. So we created this network, well, this international network of urban research works that uh, called Fragments of. When um, we did workshops in India, a couple of workshops in India and a workshop in, in Johannesburg in South Africa. So engaging, these are some pictures of the students, engaging also with local architects and, um, and local institutions in order to make this more profitable and uh, showing them the different uh, cities and the different, um, this is some of the work the students produced there. It's, it was like a, um, it was a month that we stayed in the, in different places, but um, two weeks were for getting there, doing the touristy things, understanding more or less the, and then two weeks of work. So this is like a super amazing job they did in just two weeks. These are some drawings. And we finally produced uh, a book of one of the workshops. And yeah, just to end, I don't know if, this came clear, but uh, this idea of always having the same obsessions and the same kind of mentality around the projects is what I feel um, I can show you. And yeah. Well, what a quantity of information, I guess. Well, fortunately, we are just three, so I'm the last one. Um, well, I think um, the life of an architect nowadays can have different approaches, as we have seen here. That gives you the chance to understand the profession through different points of view that theoretically uh, should be kind of connected. Um, these three parts are, in my case, my teaching activity, my research activity, and my professional activity, which I'm going to show you, like, uh, kind of quick. Um, there's one, well... Uh, with the teaching activity, I uh, will fast you because you think you know I'm teaching here, as you can see. Um, as you know, I'm teaching here in 2020 with Margarita uh, Jover. But in the in the past, I had the chance uh, to have other experiences in other places, places that I will just mention in order to have enough time for the rest. So that was just Sam, our school, second year, the same course as the one that we are doing here. So you can see like some, some pieces, some models that we uh, did last, uh, last semester, actually. Uh, we had the, like the chance to experiment the space apart from the model. Space was space itself without a function or any other kind of constraint. 
um, well, all the activities that I had, like uh, possibility to do one lecture also over there. Um, in a different way, and during three years, I had the chance to teach in a final course, uh, called Reacting Thesis, Final Thesis with Marcelo Ruiz Pardo, and having the chance to work with uh, Luis Pancorbo also, who was also my uh, director in the thesis. This is some part of the works, uh, Monica Stemann, Final Thesis. Yeah, and also coordinating, <coughs> sorry, coordinating um, activity with Luis. Uh, we uh, had the chance to 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 do the first parallel studio that uh, with uh, that our university did with the International Program in Design of in Architecture in Bangkok, developing two workshops, one in Madrid and one in Bangkok. There are some pics. Then the second part of my professional life, my second approach, my research activity which is based basically my PhD that I'm developing right now. This first investigation, which was before the PhD, but uh, it's somehow included in the PhD also, uh, parted from the idea of uh, times of uncertainty of nowadays times, and was based on the idea of how uh, the architecture reacts through the idea of hyper, hyper uh, flexibility and a collection of gadgets and furniture, which is generating a new kind of space strategies that we can call associated it uh, blurring architecture. This analysis started studying the objects as a gadget and therefore as a way of understanding the architectural program in terms of mechanical function concentration. In the, in the second part of the research um, uh, of, this, uh, of this document, the object was considered as a system of objects, thinking again in the context of a blurring architecture where we cannot consider defined limits and boundaries, the system of objects will be defined in terms of density and programmatic gradients, which finally defined a new kind of understanding the space's sense of belonging. The, the space's sense of belonging. Here uh, we can see this uh, mirror between the architecture of Archisum Associati, the 70s architectures uh, from Italy, um, and Isigami's Japanese architecture just, just 10 uh, years ago. The PhD, which is basically this, I'm not going to be going to go much deeper. Um, it's a continuation of this idea. The main idea is to understand how, in the context of the contraculture in the six, 50s, 60s, and 70s, the object were able to substitute the house we know into a topological house, a house we know, the typological into topological, the house we know into objects. So you can see here some of the results I already did and some of the examples I'm using, uh, basically with Hals and Peter Smith and, and Super Studio. And here comes uh, my professional activity. I just have two projects. Um, the first one um, is also in Ahmedabad in India, as Jorge uh, did. Um, and following the tendency that we have shown today, is this a project of cooperation? I had a chance, uh, and I was very lucky actually, uh, when I was in India to work with uh, these people. A very small community of porters in the south of the city. They were nomads. Uh, that means that they basically had to, to abandon the slum where they were living during the monsoon period. So the main idea, what the first necessity was, uh, generate um, a solid structure for them, that was completely mandatory. You can see, like how it was kind of the uh, geometry I used for that. And here also. So the idea was basically to generate a perimeter living like big big spaces in the center in order to leave them a place uh, to burn uh, the pots and to dry the pots as well as following the idea of giving them a plaza a public space which public space is basically everything in india public space is also the house so you cannot like understand that you have like this limited we have and in europe or here in the states where the house is one thing and the street is another thing the house is is, is everything so that was very important not to think 
uh, in this kind of um, in between spaces, but it's kind of placid, which was were necessary in order to develop their work, but in order to socialize, this, to respect the kind of life that they they are having, they were having. So the perimeter was basically this, no, like a space, uh, kind of a concrete space with uh, common areas uh, in the bottom and living the building um, like the private space, making this kind of uh, wood boxes that you can you can see in on the top. So the result was something like this. Here we're using or deforming somehow the the same the same geometry. You can like have another kind of facilities that were needed. Unfortunately, unfortunately, this drawing is like a summary of everything, but the quality is not very good. And the final one, the only project I'm going to show you, um, is a build project. It is in, in Madrid, where we had a chance to work exactly in the center of the city, in the Plaza Mayor. I don't know if you guys know Madrid, but if you, if you don't know, you have to go, because it's a very nice city. Um, so we have the chance, which is it's kind of difficult to, to work exactly here. Uh, it's like the exactly in the center of the city. And um, the program that uh, in this case had, uh, uh, to, had to, we, we, have to, we have to make um, was a tourist office. That's why it was also in the center. So, well, the idea was basically the next one. We were uh, working within a 16th century building, so we thought, we considered uh, that the six central columns that you guys can see over there the six central columns, which are representing the rhythm of the building, had to be protagonists of the building. So we were not a protagonist, but the columns and the, on the, and the old building, which was a Gomez de Mora building, a very important architect of the Renaissance in Spain, had to be the protagonist. No? So the idea, uh, those were to define a perimeter, something that we did with a longitudinal uh, huge furniture that you can uh, see right now. We left the six naked columns in the middle of the space and at the same time joined the two spaces, uh, one with the columns and the one with the courier. So uh, that's what the idea that we considered was like make a kind of a gesture with the furniture and uh, leave uh, these uh, naked columns in the middle. So that was uh, the result, so the first result that you can see in this photo, how the furniture is, is kind of involving um, the columns and connecting the courier that you, you do, that you can see at the end of the peak. No? Different photos where we were trying to find a constant dialogue in between the, the, the new and the old, uh, which is possible. It's possible if you are not trying to imitate the old and you are like saying, I'm modern, I'm a new architect and architect of, from my time and I'm here. No? In this case, you can respect much more than if you imitate what you, what somebody have done before. So here in this photo, you can see exactly the point of connection between the two spaces. And here you can see the final one, uh, the courier one, uh, which well basically was like the, the points where the, the, the people were helping the tourists and stuff. Yeah, a couple of peaks more. And the final one with uh, some people. The one in the left is me, if you... Um, so, uh, uh, I would like to use my last minute, I think, uh, on behalf of Jorge, Maria, and myself to uh, thank you, everybody, especially Iñaki, Margarita, Luis, Ines, and Bill, to come here, and especially to the UVA to invite, uh, invite us today to present our work, to present our city, to present our school and our country. Thank you very much.
Me to answer, all right. <laughs> um, I think, uh, yeah, it's very, it's hard. Uh, we work doing a lot of competitions in the beginning. We did a lot. We didn't win any, uh, but we still got uh, kind of like our name out, and also, yeah, it's always a word of mouth kind of a, kind of thing. You can. Um, we had this thing where we placed w once we placed uh, an advertisement in a in a magazine <laughs> in a local magazine and one person called the w the project didn't actually got to reality and everything but it, they are like we're still trying to look for that answer we don't know exactly mm -hmm. and I guess the more you do the more the people get to know you and all that but yeah competitions it's um it's a good way for starting and also uh, it's a way of um, as young architects, not losing your ideas since the beginning, because when you work with with uh, private constructors and developers and everything, um, there are many different, uh, like, I don't know, so many uh, people wanting to give their input that you will probably get lost somehow in, in the reality, which is sometimes, I mean, you, you need to cope with that and work with that in order to still kind of breathe somehow. Um, and as I was saying, the architect must be a part of that of that whole system. But um, uh, competitions leave you that kind of more space. And when they're going to be built, it's a whole different story. But well. yeah, but also I will tell you something like more sincerely. Like um, maybe the way that we made to get like many people together, many friends together. Sometimes we were like five people or seven or eight, depends on the project. Um, it also helps because always somebody have an aunt that one house or somebody have a friend that works and whatever so yeah in my case for example the tv so it was because a friend of mine works there and she has a they didn't know who called and she said i have a friend you know that kind of things happens so when you get like many people together it, it's more easy it's important to go to parties yeah <laughs> but <Parties>. also <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Without no architects, people. if that's if that's, that's the point. that can be. Yeah. <laughs> Don't just hang out. With yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think they know. Huh? Yeah. So the the problem is to start. Once you have one or two thing, little things made, you can tell people you did it that, and then just start like constructing your own like you know curriculum in that way. Hmm. Any other? I think you. I think you said it already, right? So I think this this idea of a uh, school with five thousand people means that everything is public. No, you don't have a kind of a private space to work. Uh, you have to fight with everybody to put your computer now. Like and it's my place now for this five hours or six hours, which is uh, sometimes it's not it's not it's not good, of course, because you have to yeah you have to fight. But at the same time, something I like is that you are constantly in a public correction, no? That doesn't mean that uh, you are not having private corrections because we have mm -hmm. and that's necessary. But at the same time, yeah, everything is public, no? So you have a share table where everybody is like correcting like their projects and you're seeing uh, constantly what is uh, the teacher saying to the rest of the people, which is important, no? So I think, yeah, that's the main difference answering to your question. and livelihood to the project and the representation. I wonder if you could speak a little bit about why you think that you need to mix and mix. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I would say that it's, um, 
I don't know much about what's going on abroad, but I, I'm, I sure, I'm, I'm sure uh, I do agree that um, um, within times that maybe may have been kind of obscure somehow, architecture has um, gone directly to people. Like, if we don't have, um, so if we don't have the me the means or the mediums in order to build big buildings, let's let's see what we can we, what we can do with with small resources, low resources, but but very engaging with people and participatory process and everything. And that has filled also the represent the kind of like the drawings where you see this kind of idea of uh, these um, every like when you're drawing people, every person has different clothes. It's just a silly thing, but you know it's like kind of like uh, understanding that people has been put in the first place. Um, there's also something interesting that happened in Spain, just to give a little history background is that, um, so if the crisis was 2008, more or less, there was a very big generation of, of, of um, students that came out uh, just at that point. Uh, so they were doing all their studies with this idea of, oh, we're going to have a lot of work and all that, but suddenly they didn't. So they started collectively, um, we call them colectivos, it's like collective groups somehow, and they started to um, get together and start doing very low resources projects, but with a very optimistic kind of approach, um, which I guess it's also somehow, um, also, I don't know if you know about, um, well, because it's very <laughs> complex, but uh, um, it's uh, somehow rooted also in some kind of the Spanish, um, way of thinking somehow and even uh, with we like to uh, we like to like complain a lot and all that but in the end we are kind of happy I guess <laughs> so we turned into this um, more humanistic kind of approach and with things like um, like this uh, uh, 15M I think that it's this big gathering in one in one of the public sp uh, spaces in Madrid and everything that triggered also a lot of different mentalities and everything so it's been interesting. Now, I think it's the point when where we need to think about what's the next step because we're sort of um, kind of like stuck in that in that point. And some of the younger student um, offices that um, started in 08 um, or in 2010 or something are now l facing that. Like, what's our next step? Are we going to be doing this forever or not? Is people still going to engage with this kind of mentality now that uh, economy is like working a little, going a little bit better? Yeah, but we always, always uh, like try to see the, you know, the worst part of the crisis and everything, but the crisis is not that bad sometimes because it give us time, time to think, time to recap how we, wha how was happening, wha what was that happening or what, what can happen from the moment. And it's interesting to have that time because we never had. I mean, we're not that time. happy about the crisis. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's not about being happy, but sometimes there are some things that we can take yeah, from a, a crisis. Always moment. look at the bright side. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I was doing that right. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it was a very good chance, the crisis, to improve, but I would rather go yeah, not for yeah, another for one, sure. I think. <laughs> we, yeah, are, yeah, we, yeah. Are okay. we are okay. Sarah, um, well, thank you so much. It's a depressing thank you. that this should go on for, if you've been around for three decades, I hope that you keep on coming back here and joining us for over the next three decades. What I'm so impressed with, in many trades, is what Simon did most with very, very little. And in 1492, Spain got here and but they got used to traveling and they discovered the co continent over here on their maps. And I, when uh, we took students to India and we were in Medabagh and Joshi's office, and they met the students there working for them, there were, there were three or four students from Spain, which is not really 12, 12 uh, 10, 12, and so, uh, 13 or 10, but sorry, that the, the um, DNA to explore and to go beyond the immediacy of where you are, to try new lands and to do things. Well, take to yourself. That's why I like two weeks figuring out who you are in India and then two weeks going to Antwerp seems to be not just a new thing but a wonderful thing that's mm -hmm. five hundred years old. Mm -hmm. So maybe it is a kind of seeing the resilience of it to start working here if it works there. So that's again I hope our maps are not completely filled out and we'll come back and discover projects that we can do here. So this is a great treat. I hope to share two or three others then of these kinds of introductions from having been happening in the middle here, Simon. But uh, it's terrific to build upon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs>
Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you thank very you much. much.